Hello, this is Mr. Moreno. Welcome to another episode of Thomas and Friends. I mean, past six science. Anyways, this part I think, well, maybe it's just me, but it's pretty easy and self explanatory, except for a few parts. So first, we'll start with desertification. Desertification is exactly like it sounds desertification. It's when something becomes a desert. And by that it means that there are no nutrients in the sand. It's just sand. It's not really soil anymore. All the topsoil that we learned about in 4.1 and 4.2 is gone. And how does that happen? Two ways. One is when there's a loss of minerals. And two is when there's a lack of roots. So let me explain that. I don't think the book explains why they go away. I don't remember, but I don't remember reading this part. So let me explain. So one w one of the things it said was that was that if you have too many animals grazing, overgrazing, that means animals are eating too many plants or grasses, that this could cause desertification. But I don't think it told you why. One of the reasons why is because plants have roots, like grass. See, I I drew here some roots. And roots, if you've ever pulled out a big chunk of grass, roots are pretty good at keeping soil together. They have a lot of roots that keep the soil together. So imagine there's a lot of wind or air. This can be either wind or air, this blue, these blue lines. There's a lot of wind or air, but there are a lot of grasses holding everything together. Then the topsoil stays there. And remember, the topsoil is very important because it has hummus and it's and it's very important for other plants to grow next year. So grasses are good, but if we have too many animals that ate all of these grasses, then the roots die and this can easily wash away all of the good nutrients, minerals, and it's caused by a lack of roots sometimes. Another thing is crop, ro crop rotation, another thing that they talk about. And crop rotation means that if I have a plot here. This is my farm, right? I cannot keep growing in the same spot rice or corn year after year after year. That is not good. Think about nature. That does not happen in nature. In nature, we don't grow, so many things don't grow in one spot over and over and over again. It takes time. So, by because we're humans and we have found a way to go against nature, we are capable of growing the same thing in much larger quantities than is natural. Why is that bad? Well, you'll learn in past seven in detail, but just a short thing is that these plants grow because there are some sort of minerals in the soil. Some of them are organic minerals, uh, mater uh, organic materials, not organic minerals, organic materials, but if we grow too much in one spot, those go away. It's like using faster than they come out. So we need to rotate with other kinds of plants that some that can actually put good minerals and things into the soil. Why is that good? Well, if first we put something like corn that eats up all of this good stuff, then now it has just a few things we need to grow. However, there are some plants like alfalfa. Alfalfa, I guess you can say, it looks like hay. This plant puts things back into the soil. And that is the one example I always think about alfalfa. Um, alfalfa? I think it's epic. Don't take my word for it. But anyways, do take my word that this puts back things into the soil that corn or other plants that suck these up need to grow. So we need to rotate. So maybe here I'll have corn one, one year, next year I'll have alfalfa. Next year I'll have corn again, next year I'll have alfalfa. And they keep switching so that the stuff in the ground will not go away. Now, there are other ways to protect the soil other than just crop rotation. The book talks about windbreaks, and I'm sure you've all seen windbreaks before. You probably 
just didn't know what they were. And these are very common near strawberry farms because strawberries are very sensitive. Wind can blow strawberry seeds away and they won't grow. So they put trees maybe next to the farm like this. So if wind is coming, the trees block the wind. And you might have done that yourself. You might have stood next to a tree on a really windy day because the tree will block the wind. Same idea. They'll put, they'll put trees to block the wind. And these plants that are sensitive to that or even just protecting the soil from blowing away, um, this is a very good way to do that. Next is terracing. And I've seen this in Korea before. And that is on page... 136, terracing is when you start farming on a hill like this, like steps. And the reason you're doing that is because if it rains on this mountain, you don't want the water to just wash straight down the side of the mountain. That is bad for the topsoil. The topsoil will wash right off. But if you build it like this, oh, the water can seep into the land. And that is good. Another way is, it says, uh, contour plowing, and that's when you plow in a curve. So if, the, if it rains over here, it can follow this path, instead of just washing straight down. Because the faster it washes straight down, the more of that topsoil it can take off. And I believe that was the last one, because the very last thing is wind breaks, which I already talked about. Talked about. Alright, that's all. Goodbye. Thomas and friends. Can't find the exit button. Oh, there it goes. Bye.